Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole. I hope you had an amazing Thanksgiving. I was so busy last week, so I didn't have a chance to post a video, but we're back. And this week I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Shortly after the new year, I'm gonna be completely changing what I do here on this channel. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what it is yet. I'm gonna keep it a secret, but it's amazing. And I'm stoked out of my mind to tell you what it's about. I've had this idea for a really long time now and it's literally taken everything in me to keep it a secret, but it's taken a while to get all the pieces put together and find a team of people that can help me with executing this vision. It's really, really cool. It's really exciting. I might throw a couple hints out there in the next few weeks, but get hyped, get excited. I cannot wait to share this with you. And if you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe to my channel because you're not gonna wanna miss the launch. Trust me, you'll know about it because I'm gonna like be hyping you up all the way to the week of. But in the meantime, tell your friends, share this account because I'm super excited for what's to come. But today's video is gonna be all dedicated to photography. I'm gonna be answering some of the questions you asked me on my Instagram and also throwing in a couple tips and things I've learned in my 10 years as a professional photographer. If you're an aspiring photographer or maybe just have some questions as a beginner, go ahead and leave a comment down below with any of your questions in case I don't answer them. Okay, so my journey as a photographer started about 10 years ago. I remember being a freshman in high school and I had this pink digital point and shoot Sony camera, the ones that you like turn on and the little lens comes out. That's the camera that I started with. And I remember walking around outside, taking pictures of rocks, peacock feathers. I would take pictures of my dog and railroad tracks. And I didn't even know how to edit photos. Like I had Photoshop, but I never used it because it was so complex. But I used this thing called um, Pixel, Pixel something. I forget, it was like some online Google photo editing software. And I thought it was so cool. Like crank up the saturation to 100. It was a mess. But one of my, I remember specifically Specifically, one of my dance teachers told me that I should pursue photography and I had never thought of that before and so that Christmas I decided to invest in myself and order my very first DSLR camera I didn't even know what that meant but my very first camera was a Canon rebel if you're a beginner photographer Canon rebels are a great place to start mine was really really old I had the, like the XI now their rebel line is even way better than what I started so if you're just starting out and don't want to break the bank on a super expensive camera camera, I would look into the Canon Rebel. The T7, I believe, is the newest model, and it would be great for what you're trying to do. I want to put a disclaimer out there before we get too deep into this video. I have always been a Canon girl. I've never really shot Nikon. I recently just switched over to Sony, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but I've been Canon for about 10 years. Love them. I think they have the best glass in the business, and by that I mean the lenses that you use. Um, and I just have loved the quality and the, the work that comes out of my Canon cameras. Another thing to note too, on NicoleTheNomad.com, my blog, if you click on shop and scroll down, there's a carousel that says my photography equipment and I have linked there every single piece of equipment I either have used or am currently using. So I have my camera bodies, my lenses, my microphones, my tripods, my ring light, literally it's all on there. But I'll put that link in the description box below so you can have that available to you. And it all just links straight to Amazon so you can get it and it's super easy. Once I felt like I needed to upgrade from my Rebel, my second camera I got was the 60D. I loved my 60D. It is a crop sensor, so that could be good or bad depending on what you're doing. But what I loved about the 60D is that it was a little bit smaller than the 5D and it had a swivel screen. So whenever I was taking pictures or making videos of myself, I could pop that screen out and be able to see exactly where I was. Um, whereas the 5D does not have that and I had to buy a separate monitor so that I could see what I was looking at. Oh, really quick to note, if you do get a Rebel, um, look at places like Costco, even on Amazon, they come in a kit that will include a camera bag, your strap, and it comes with two different kit lenses. Usually that lens will be the 18 to 55 and then the 55 to 200, but you really just have to look at the kit um, and see what it all comes with. But that's a great way to get more bang for your buck and have a couple different lenses to play around with. There's two different kinds of lenses, I guess if you want to categorize them. Prime lenses mean that you cannot zoom. It's one focal length, which means if you want to get further away, you physically have to walk closer or further away to get that depth. Um, and then there's the telephoto lenses, which have the zoom, which you can crank in and be really zoomed in on a subject that's fine 
far away or you can be more wide angle. So for a while when I was shooting with my 60D, I used my 18 to 200 lens because I could do really wide angle at 18, but then I could also crank all the way to 200 and get really, really far up to something. After my 60D, I upgraded to the Canon 5D Mark III. Now this was before the Mark IV came out. The Mark IV is amazing. I wish I owned it, but I love the Mark III. I've been shooting with it for over six years. This is my first full frame DSLR. Um, and the difference between cropped and full frame is literally exactly how it sounds. Cropped, your sensor is cropped. And then full frame, you get more. The thing I didn't know about this, I've learned most of the things I know about photography through mistakes and like little fails that I've had. But the thing about a full frame camera is that not every lens fits on these bodies. Oftentimes the only lenses that fit on them are the more expensive ones. So with Canon, their highest series of lenses are called the L series. And you can tell if it's an L series lens because it has this little red ring around the lens. So if you see somebody with a red ring around their lens, you know that it's a good lens and it's a good camera. This lens that I have on it right now, this is a prime lens, so there's no zoom, um, and it's the 50 millimeter 1.2. 1.2 is the aperture and that controls how big or small the, the shutter, I think it's the shutter, the, the, the hole opens basically and that allows light to come in. So the 1.2 gets really big and allows in a lot of light. That's where you get those really, really creamy, um, shallow depth of field images where one thing is in focus and everything else is blurred. That bokeh, that really nice, like mm, juicy Instagram shot, that's what this lens can do and I absolutely love it. It's not cheap though. This was definitely an investment, but it's an amazing lens and I love the photos I get from it. I usually use this for my portrait shoots. I don't use it for landscapes because it's prime. I can't really get a lot of wide um, shots, but this is an, this is an incredible lens. But what I was saying about the lenses is that because this is a full frame camera, only these certain types of lenses work on it. So when I first bought this camera, I thought that my 18 to 200 millimeter lens from my 60D would fit onto this and I was going to England in a week and I got my new camera and I tried to put the lens on and it didn't fit because it was for a crop sensor and I had no idea. So I had to run to the camera store and drop a couple hundred dollars on a lens that would fit a full frame body. So don't make the same mistake I did. If you're buying um, a full frame body or crop sensor, make sure that the lens you're getting to go with it actually fits on your body or else it'd be like me and have to spend more money. Now the thing to know about this camera is that it doesn't have the nifty little flash that pops up. With a lot of the lower end cameras, um, still really great cameras, but when you take a picture on flash, this little thing pops up and you've got a flash. This does not have that, so you have to get the additional attachment that goes on the top so that you have a flash. So really, if you are investing in a 5D Mark III or 5D Mark IV or any full frame body from Canon, you are making a big investment, not only on the body, but also in getting a good quality glass to get you a great photo and then the additional attachments like a flash to get the full package. And it ends up being a lot of hardware and it's really, really heavy. Just throwing that out there. But it's a great camera. Up until about two years ago, I've been shooting Sony and only Sony, but what I was running into when I really wanted to start taking my YouTube channel seriously is that with this camera, it does amazing videos, especially using this prime lens. You can get some amazing detail shots, but when you flip it around and try to hold it out to do a vlog, one, it's heavy and my arms were shaking and felt like they were going to fall off. And two, it doesn't have very good tracking focus. And that means if I was walking around New York and I was doing this and doing a vlog, and flipping it around and getting my, my friends, like I'm a crazy cinematographer when I'm doing my vlogs, it, everything would be blurry because unless you're sitting here constantly changing the focus and making sure everything is crystal sharp, it's blurry. And I could not, I couldn't, I couldn't film any of my vlogs. And so I ended up buying the Sony a7R 3 because it's an incredible camera. It's mirrorless, which is something new that I had never experimented with before. Um, and it has an amazing auto focus. And so I bought the Sony primarily for my videos and for vlogging because with all the YouTube videos I watched and the research I did, that seemed to be like the good one that most vloggers were using. So I bought the Sony a7R III and I didn't get a very expensive lens to go with it. I just got the wide angle 16 to 35 because I knew that if you crank it all the way to 16 and you held it right out, you would literally be able to see so much and I wouldn't have to worry about whether or not I was in the frame. This camera changed my life. Recently, one thing I've started to run into is that when I go on these trips, I'm bringing my really heavy Canon along with me for all my photos and then I'm bringing my Sony along with me for all my videos and my vlogs and I'm walking around with these two cameras and microphones on each of them and flashes and it's so heavy and so much equipment and I'm like juggling between two it just got to be too much now my last trip I was like you know what I've kind of had it Ooh, I can't believe I did this I think 
I just made the decision to go full Sony. I'm gonna keep my Canon just as backup for weddings and things that I need a second camera for if something goes wrong, but I did a couple photo shoots with my Sony. The mirrorless is incredible. It's kind of hard to get used to, but the shots, I have the same lens on the Sony as I do the Canon, so essentially it's the same thing. It's just a smaller body, it's a little lighter, and I can do my vlogs with it too. So I'm giving it a try. I'll let you know how it goes, but right now I am shooting full Sony a7R III right now at the 18 to 200 2.8, but I also have got my 16 to 35 wide angle. Moving on, before I get too deep into the technicalities and specifics of camera gear, because I'm a nerd and I could talk about these things all day, I'm gonna go to Instagram and look at the questions that you asked so I could answer those specifically, and then we'll go from there. Okay, how much study should a person do before taking photos, AKA best way to learn? And then we also have a similar one, best ways to up my photography game. Honestly, shoot, just shoot. Take your camera, take pictures of everything. Take it with you. My camera usually never leaves my side. I'm known as the friend that always has a camera with her and I can't go anywhere without looking like a tourist because I always have this giant camera around my shoulder. It sounds so cliche, but the more you shoot, the more you're gonna learn about your camera. I just encourage you to experiment. Honestly, the only way I got any good was by shooting people. Ask your friends if you can go out and take pictures of them. Everybody loves free photo shoots because you get free Instagram photos. My business literally started by taking photos of friends and then somebody saw them online and thought they were good and asked me if I would take their photos. This leads into another question that I got. How do you recommend growing your business? As a small business owner, word of mouth is how you survive. In the beginning, you have to make sacrifices and do a lot of things for free. That's why I started shooting my friends. I asked a couple if I could take fake engagement photos of them. Start somewhere and just shoot anything and everything. The great thing about digital cameras is that you're not wasting any film. So just take photos, take lots of photos because you're not obligated to post them. You don't have to do anything with them and they're so easy to just delete. So take more photos than you think necessary and you're going to be surprised how much you learn. On that same note for the question about what do you recommend for growing your business, serve and love your clients the best way you know how. Honestly, this is the customer service business. You want your clients to feel like the most special person in the world. So whether you're doing a wedding, an engagement, a senior photo shoot, a fashion shoot, whatever it is, your job is to make that person feel the most incredible they've ever felt in their entire life. Go above and beyond for your clients because if they have a good experience, they will share it with their friends. They will share it with their family. They'll post your images everywhere and people will be asking who the heck took your pictures. There's something to be said about knowing the art of photography and taking good photos, but there's also a whole other side of the business where you have to serve your clients. So love on them, be in communication with them, give them a free gift, buy them coffee before their shoot. Like whatever you do, show your clients how much you love and appreciate and value that they just invested their, their money and their time in giving you an opportunity to take their photos. Okay, this is a good question. Places to take photos when you travel. Okay, um, so before I go on a trip, I do a lot of research mostly on Instagram. I also look on Pinterest, but I also just like Google things because there's some really awesome travel blogs out there like Nicole the Nomad. Anyways, um, but I look up on Instagram, I use hashtags and I find pictures that are already out there and then I save mood boards. I make boards on Pinterest, I make albums in my Instagram and I save ideas that I like. That way when I get to the place, I know exactly where I wanna go, how I want the picture to look and how I'm gonna spin it to have my creative twist on it. This is so helpful knowing beforehand kind of what my expectations are going into a trip, especially if I'm not going just for work, like if it's a fun trip, I don't want the entire trip to be about taking pictures of me for my Instagram because if I'm with family or friends that can get kind of annoying and so the more I can be prepared in advance I can just do something really quick have my friend or my dad just like snap a photo of me because I already have it planned out and I know exactly what I want and what I'm looking for and it's also helpful if you don't have a photographer coming with you which I'm assuming a lot of people don't because let's be honest I do this full-time and I don't even have a photographer that comes with me all the time you can show them from your mood board or your Instagram like hey I want it to look kind of like this like get this shot I'll stand here um, another thing you can do is have them go stand and have you take the photo how you want it and then show them like hey I want it to look just like this except I'm gonna stand there super good way to do it uh, which leads me to my next question that I got asked who takes photos of me um, <laughs> this is such a funny question because it's actually something I struggle with a lot as an influencer and a blogger um, it's hard for me to find photographers so if any of you out there are photographers in the LA area want to help a sister out, 
hit me up. I'll definitely take you up on that. Um, it really just depends. Usually it's my dad if I'm home or with family. He's amazing and so, so patient with me. <laughs> he's He knows a lot about my camera because I've taught him a lot and he's really quick at learning, but he's really creative and I love shooting with him. Um, there's a couple photographer friends I have in LA that if they're free, we can get together and shoot. Other than that, it's literally random people, sometimes strangers, sometimes I'll just like literally ask someone on the side of the road like, hey, can you snap this photo of me really quick? Because it's always changing. And honestly, other times it's self timer. I put my camera on a tripod, hit the self timer, and it usually takes me about an hour, but what are you gonna do? Gotta get the shot. So there's that little bit of info. My husband bought me a camera for Christmas. Do you have any advice to get started? Just shoot, pick up that camera, turn it on, get off of auto, put it on manual, figure out the settings. I watch YouTube tutorials daily. I made a commitment to myself that I'm going to learn more about my craft so I can be a better photographer, a better filmmaker, and be more creative and serve people at my best. So I just suggest putting it on manual, play around, fail, fall on your face, figure it out, but that's how you're going to learn and I think it's just gonna be amazing for you. Also, so nice that your husband bought you a camera. Not necessarily photos, but recommendations for video editing for beginners and do you teach a photography course? I do, kind of. I'm not sure how many of you follow me on Instagram, but I just launched a mentorship program called InstaQueen where I talk all about how to create content for Instagram, how to grow your following, how to build an engaged audience, but on top of that, photography tips, how to use your camera, how to take creative shots, how to edit your photos, and additionally, video editing. If you're interested in that, find me on Instagram and shoot me a DM, or you can email me. I'll put my email in the description box down below, but it's a really, really cool program that I'm super excited about. And so far, my clients and my mentees that I've worked with have just like been so amazing and done so well with it. So that's cool. Um, but video editing for beginners, I think just watch tutorials, play around in the program. That's how I learned. I, t I teach myself a lot of things, and I think it's, it's less daunting and intimidating if you just sit down and try to do it. Um, you'd be surprised at how much you can figure out. How do you edit always looking to learn more? That's awesome. I don't know if you're talking about photos or videos, but um, just play around in Lightroom in Photoshop. You're gonna discover a lot of things. If you want a good place to start, I sell my presets on my website. I'll link them right down here below, but presets are a good way. I don't think they're just like a slap on filter, but it's a good starting point to click on something and then have a base of um, a look that you like and then you can kind of tweak it from there. I, I use presets, I make my own presets. They're really great, they saved my life. And it saves you a lot of time in editing, so I would highly recommend that. What ring light do you use? I got this question three times. Like I said before, they're all linked in my shop. I'll put the link down here and you can check it out. How do you pick the best camera and lens? It all depends on what you wanna do. I just talked a lot about the cameras that I use and which ones I've had success with. If you don't wanna spend a lot of money, I would recommend the Canon 60D. There's also um, a smaller version, the point and shoot. I think it's the Canon G, G7X or something like that. Not really sure, I should know that, but I'll link it down below and you can look that up too. And then picking the right lens again, it goes back to what types of photos are you trying to take? Are you trying to get really juicy, creamy, shallow depth of field shots? You're going to want to get a prime lens, like the 50 millimeter 1.8 or the 1.2. Um, if you want something that you can, that's a little more versatile, that you can take with you, that you can be wide, but then you can also zoom far in, you're gonna to want to probably get a telephoto or a standard lens. It all depends on what you're using this camera for and what types of photos you hope to achieve because really, a lot of it comes down to your equipment. What type of lenses are you using? What camera body do you have? And then comes the creativity. If you don't know your equipment and you don't know what you're shooting with and how it works, it's gonna be a lot harder to get the end result that you want. How do you get started with travel and leisure style photography? Same thing, shoot, just shoot, start taking pictures. If you have a vision and a dream of where you wanna be, do that now. Like, if your dream goal is to be a destination wedding elopement photographer, you might have to make an investment and go to another country and get a couple together and do a stylized shoot. Because if people don't know that you do it, if you're not branding yourself and marketing your business as what you want to be, how are people gonna know that that's what you do? So if you wanna shoot couples, shoot couples. If you wanna shoot landscapes, like go somewhere and take pictures of the landscape and then post it. Tell people that's what you're doing. Okay, last question. This isn't really about photography, but it kinda goes with what we're talking about. How do you budget and afford trips to amazing photo destinations? With this one, it all comes down to what your priorities are. If you truly wanna be a travel photographer or a travel blogger, you have to go. There's a way to travel, there's a way to do it where you don't have to break the bank. Usually the most 
expensive thing becomes the flight. So if you have any flexibility in your travel plans, then try to travel at a time where airline tickets are cheaper. I've talked about this before, but I get all my flights off of Skyscanner. They're amazing. If you download the app or even online, they have so many good flight deals and you can set up the notifications to alert you when prices drop. So check them out because they're amazing. And then also figure out when you're on your trip, what kind of compromises you're willing to make. There's so many ways to save money while you travel. Like you can pack snacks, you can pack breakfasts, so you can eliminate one meal for the day. In most countries, staying at backpackers and hostels are really a great way to save money on accommodation. Figure out for you what you want your trip to be. If you want to stay at a really nice place, but maybe eat more quick service meals and not spend as much money on food or vice versa. You'd rather stay, you don't really need to stay at a five star hotel, but you want to eat really fancy food. Whatever that trip looks like for you, there are ways to make it so you're not breaking the bank. I do a lot of planning and research before I go on any trip so that I know exactly what my plans are, where I want to shoot, where I want to eat. And I have that all figured out so that when I go, it's the least stressful, least crazy, most fun, relaxing experience it can be because then and only then I truly believe is when you're able to be creative and able to come up with ideas for photos or for videos or to do what you want to do as a content creator. I stand by the idea that preparation is the key to success. The more prepared you are, the better. All that to say too, you don't have to travel to another country to travel. You could take a road trip. You could go to a new city. There could be a city right outside of the city that you live in that's amazing that you've never explored before that might have a cute little restaurant or a cool hike you can do to get new pictures. Don't think you have to go to Italy and like take pictures in Milan to be a travel photographer. Start with what you have and what you can do because as you grow and as you learn, more opportunities will arise. So figure out what you wanna do and then go do it. That's my challenge for you in 2020. Make a list of like four or five things that you really wanna do, places you wanna go, and then go do them. That's how all of this started for me. Nicole and Nomad, my YouTube channel, literally everything I'm doing right now started from realizing that I was making a list of all the things that I wanted to do and spending more time doing that than actually doing the stuff. And so I created the hashtag do stuff movement as a way to challenge myself to like get up and do the stuff on the list. And I started writing about it. I started taking pictures of it and it started motivating people to get up and do the stuff on their list too. So here's what I want you to do. We're gonna figure out what your visions and your dreams are for 2020 and we're gonna write them down. So after this, you can even put them in the comments below. Tell me what you're going to do in 2020 because I wanna be there for you and cheer you on and root you on in the journey. This is the year that we're gonna make things happen, okay? I hope this was helpful. I've never really done a video like this, like a photography tips, Q&A type style. I don't even know what this video is called, but I just realized over the last 10 years, I've learned so much and I want to give that to you. I want to help you become a better photographer and a videographer. I want to help you reach your dreams. So if there's any other things about my job or about my life that you're curious about, please let me know. Put them in the comments below and I will do my best to make that happen. In the meantime, you can find me on Instagram at Nicole the Nomad. You can reach out to me there, but yeah, I just hope that this video inspired you. I hope that this encourages you to pick up a camera and just start taking pictures. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next week in New York. Bye.